Thank you, President, and also thank you to the Commissioner-designate for your opening remarks. One issue that is not emphasized enough in your mission letter, but also in the written answers that you have sent in before this hearing, is the working conditions and the social standards for those who work in the transport sector. Today, national and EU regulation have created a situation where transport workers are forced to compete with each other by lowering wages and working standards. This is, of course, unacceptable in principle, but it also undermines the sector as such. Today, we have a massive staffing and recruitment problem in the transport sector across member states. For the SND group, it is clear that good working conditions is the key for the future of European transport. So as responsible commissioner for transport, what concrete policies will you pursue in order to improve the working conditions for all the people in transport in Europe? Thank you. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much, Mr. Danielson, um, for the question. I think I stated, of course, briefly in my introductory remarks because I couldn't have uh, detail, um, uh, make it a, a larger presentation on this, that I do believe that if we want to succeed with any of our uh, policies, we have to go um, to obtain the acceptance and um, the support of the people. And when we look at transport, we have... Transport is about people. Transport is people. That's why we are doing um, transport for the people and with the people. So we have the category of the workers inside the system, and then we have, of course, the users. So we have to uh, be very careful and um, streamline their needs in our policies, or else we have seen that it might raise problems and uh, social uh, unrest. Uh, when we talk about working conditions for the workers in the system, uh, I know that uh, there are shortages. I know that people worry that the changes uh, brought by innovation, digitalization, automation will threaten their jobs. What we need to do is by one hand to find the right policies so that this won't impact badly to retrain, to reskill, to use financial instruments existing in the European Union to uh, finance this retraining and reskilling. And most of all, we need to explain to people. We have to explain them and get their support so that they don't get scared that the f uh, modern future for transport, it means someone will be left uh, beyond. I'm uh, completely committed to this uh, approach and I will follow up on all the work that is already going on. I know uh, uh, previous commissioner was working and uh, others and I uh, uh, and the parliament worked on this very much and I'm absolutely sure that together we can put our heads uh, to deliver something concrete for the workers in the system. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for an answer. Uh, I would, I would do ask you to be a bit more concrete already today, and I would like to turn the attention specifically to the aviation sector. As you, as you know, uh, studies from the Commission itself has clearly demonstrated a wide range of questionable practices that undermines working standards but also distort competition within the aviation sector. So I would ask you to answer more, perhaps two more specific questions on this topic. Firstly, how do you intend to ensure compliance with current labor, social, and tech standards in the aviation sector? But also, and equally, at least equally important, will you present any new legislation addressing the social condition in aviation as part of a broader aviation package? And then specifically addressing issues such as fictitious home bases, the misuse of social security certificates, bogus self-employment, pay-to-fly schemes, and other unacceptable practices that are in the aviation sector today. Thank you. Um, aviation, aviation sector is very competitive. It's um, of tremendous importance for the uh, transport system and generally for businesses and people in Europe. Um, the profession, uh, professions in, uh, in the sector are highly uh, appreciated um, professions. Uh, but nowadays, there is a danger, especially what, what you have mentioned, on uh, unlawful practices, on um, hard working condition, that um, 
the sector will get, um, the profession will get a negative image. And then that means shortage of workers in this area. Uh, we know there are, um, um, there are specificities because with the cost of the pilots. We know that there are different business models in a liberalized uh, market which may uh, conduct to unlawful practices or not right business models. Um, we need all the members on board, the member states, the airlines, the air crew associations, workers and employers organization, and the parliament. And I think we will be able to progress on the agenda in aviation if everyone make a joint effort. Uh, I am aware of the calls. Veuillez conclure, madame. Ah oui, um, excusez-moi. Um, en effet, uh, actually, I'm going to say that I will uh, take all the needed measures, legislative or not, to um, address all these uh, shortages uh, 